Men tjens! Men tjena! Hur mår du? Jag mår bra, hur mår du? Jag mår bra. Ska du göra en video på svenska? Ja. Okej, okay, vad ska den handla om? Mat. <laughs> Welcome to this month's Swedish American culture comparison Was video. Was that a slash sign? Yeah. Okej. Okay. So this week is a very special week. This is a Swedish preparation video for your trip to America. Okay, <laughs> we've been now in the States for a little while and Lisa is having withdrawals. Is having withdrawals. And so she has put together a list of her top 10 favorite foods that she can't get in America. So if you are Swedish or Scandinavian or European or something that's not American, She's about to list 10 foods that are extremely hard to find here. Number 10. Kräftor or crayfish. They are so good. They're salty. So in Sweden, we, um, we boil them with a ton, a ton of dill. And you actually, okay guys, I know this sounds gross, but it's very good. You like suck the, the juice out of their... It's so weird. Stomach. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. You're sitting at a table I of sweets. I sound barbaric right kreftor, now. And it's just a lot of like. Kreftor. I love kreftor. <laughs> Say kreftor. Kreftor. Number nine. Halloumi. How this is not huge in California is like beyond me. All you sweets. We all know it's like halloumi burgers at Max. You can find halloumi, halloumi, halloumi. It's it's everywhere and it's so good. It's such a great substitute also, I think, for meat. Mm. Halloumi is not Swedish per se. It's from Cyprus, but it's hugely popular in Sweden. Yeah. I feel like it's becoming like a Swedish thing. Yeah, and it hasn't made it to the States at all. Besides for like... It's super expensive. It's a in... matter of time, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Number eight. Köttbullar. Or meatballs. And it always happens. People are like, oh my god, Ikea, yeah, meatballs. I go there for the meatballs. And I'm like, good for you. Maybe, maybe not. You haven't had them. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> okay, maybe they are. I'm just saying that if in the future you get a chance to taste real homemade Swedish meatballs, then please do, because it is a big, big difference in flavor. And they can come like a little bit larger size, and they, it's just, it's a different, it's a different game. Number seven. Semla. Semla, 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 oh semla, 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 Okay, describe what semla is. It's a cardamom flavored bun. You cut it in half. You stuff it with almond paste, which is delicious, especially if it's homemade. You use heavy whipping cream, whip it up real nice and airy, puffy, and put it in the middle and the lid on top. It's like a burger, basically, but with cardamom, dough, and cream in between. And it's like, it it's, is it's a worth big its deal. own trip to Sweden, <laughs> for sure. Well, I kind of agree. Number five, lingon, lingonberry. Lingonberry anything. Gosh, it's so it's so good. And when you have a dish that needs lingonberry jam, which there's would like, be like moose meatballs. Oh my god, moose meatballs. Mm, it's really good. It's not often, but when it happens, the withdrawals are real. It's a struggle. Number five, saffron ice cream. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you are one of these people that I would love to be that make your own ice cream and it tastes amazing. I have actually not tried that yet. I don't think you have either. Have you? Mm, not with you. Oh, but you have. Oh yeah. Oh, can you make good ice cream? Kids, we used to do that in like science projects in school with rock salt. <laughs> that is so American. <laughs> you make ice cream in chemistry class. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You don't really use it in America. Definitely not in Southern California. I believe it's the, I think it's like Amish the saffron is a huge part of their cooking, and so they have saffron flowers everywhere. So mm -hmm. um, come saffron mm -hmm. season, it's, uh, everything's wow. flavored with saffron there. Number four. Salt lakris, salt de licorice, always and forever <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> okay, so it actually is getting a little easier to find here, but it's not Swedish famous brands, the ones that I'm looking for. They're kind of like Dutch brands, not as good. 
But I'm not complaining. I can I can find them. At least you can find them. At least I can find them. But whenever I go to Sweden, I stack up on my Hexvrål and... Why don't you just go ahead and grab your... Okay. You're about to see how serious this is. This is the perfect example of all the things that I dislike. It's salty licorice everywhere. These are so good. These are kind of new. Have you guys seen this? It's like a Pac-Man ghost. Mm, yeah. But here, look, you can see in here, there's some other candies that aren't licorice, but now they're only available to licorice eaters because there's it's salt a, all over them. It's a strategy. Okay, okay, here, we have a video to do. <laughs> Come back here. Okay. Hey. Number three. Kex Kex Kokolade doesn't really have a translation. It's just what it is. It's a uh, Kex chocolate. So I love it and my latest guilty pleasure is that I really, really like it with my morning coffee. I make like a little latte in the morning and then I, I didn't have know Kex you were eating candy for breakfast. I know, you have to stop me. Number two. Seal or pickled herring. I know, this is a weird thing. Mm -hmm. Fermented pickled fish. But again, it's that salt. I just love these salty pickled things. I, however, do not miss pickled herring. I'm kind of sticking to the more traditional ones, the classics, but that might change. We'll see. What is that dance you're doing? Oh, that's my pickle dance. <laughs> and number one, what is the number one thing that you miss? Callous caviar. For all of you who are waking up in the night just like craving and dreaming about smoked fish roe out of a tube. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Dream big, dream big. Dream big. Well, there you have it. Lisa's top 10 most missed Swedish foods. So, if you're planning your trip to the States, think wisely. None of those <laughs> foods will be readily available to you. If you're an American planning to go to Sweden, any of those foods will be an interesting experience for you to try. <laughs> And um, that does it for this video. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all of your insights. Oh yeah, that was so lovely. Sorry I blew salted licorice air in your face. That was very cruel. <laughs> I also just want to say that we're going to make another video about what you miss as an American when you're in Sweden as far as like candy and beverages and things and things to put. Spoiler alert, mouth. it's probably a lot more processed than your food. I want to know what you guys think. Uh, do I have terrible taste? Can you kind of relate or what would you miss if you left Sweden as far as foods and candies and stuff? I want to know. I definitely want to know that I'm not alone craving all these weird stuff. All right, you guys, make sure to like, subscribe and comment. Hit the alert button to get notifications so you won't miss any more Swedish American videos. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.